There are a startling number of parts to this problem. Let's get started by noticing that there are five degrees of freedom in this diatomic gas if we assume that vibrations are frozen out. So that tells us the value of CV, the molar specific heat at constant volume, the value of CP, and the adiabatic constant gamma, which is the ratio CP to CV. That's 7 fifths, or 1.40. Now we can solve part A, which asks for the ratio P2 over P1. We'll do this by writing the ideal gas law twice, once for state 2 and once for state 1, and taking the ratio. Notice that the right-hand side entirely cancels because the process is isothermal, so T2 equals T1, and the ratio of the pressures equals the inverse ratio of the volumes, which is one-third. I'll accumulate the answers to all the parts over here. Part B asks for the ratio P3 to P1. The path joining 1 and 3 is an adiabatic, so we can use PV to the gamma equals a constant, and solve it for the ratio. It equals the ratio of the volumes, 1 to 3, raised to the gamma power. Notice that the process from 2 to 3 occurs at constant volume, so V2 equals V3. So this gives us the same ratio raised to the 1.40 power, and that's 0 0.215. Part C asks for the ratio T3 to T1. Again, the path joining those two points is an adiabatic, so we have TV to the gamma minus 1 is a constant. Solve for the ratio, and substitute the value of gamma. This gives us 0 0.644. Now let me erase all of this so we have room to solve the next batch of questions dealing with the isothermal from 1 to 2. In Part D, we're asked to find the normalized work done along that path. The work along an isothermal path is nRT times the natural log ratio of the volumes. When we divide the work by nRT1, we end up with the natural log of the ratio of the volumes, and that's 1.10. In part E, we're asked to find Q, the energy added by heat along that path, divided by the same factor. We'll find this from the first law. Noticing that for an isothermal process, there's no change in internal energy, because delta T is zero. So the energy Q that we're looking for equals the work done by the gas, and when we normalize by nRT1, we again get 1.10. Part F asks for the change in internal energy. For an isothermal process, delta T is zero, so there's no change in internal energy, and the answer to that part is zero. Part G asks for the entropy change, divided by nR. We'll find that by integrating this expression. The left-hand side gives us delta S, and on the right-hand side, the temperature is constant, because the process is isothermal, so we get Q over T1. When we divide both sides by nR, we end up with Q divided by nR T1, and again, that's 1.10. Let's erase and solve the batch of questions dealing with path 2 to 3, which is the constant volume process. First, we're asked to find the work. When there's no change in volume, there's no work, so the answer to part H is zero. Part I asks us for Q, the energy added by heat from 2 to 3, divided by the same factor. We'll find this using the expression Q equals NCV delta T. It's a constant volume process, so CV. The change in temperature is the final minus initial, T3 minus T2. And notice that T2 equals T1, because those points are joined by an isothermal. So we can write this expression and normalize it by nRT1, realizing that the ratio T3 to T1 is our answer to part C. So we can substitute those values and calculate, and we get negative 0.890.
In part J, we're asked to find the change in internal energy from 2 to 3, normalized. We'll find this using the expression delta E is NCV delta T. That's true for any process. That's the same thing we just calculated in the last part. It's equal to the energy added by heat. So again, we get negative 0 0.890. Let's erase and solve part K, the change in entropy over NR. If we integrate this equation, on the left-hand side we get delta S. On the right-hand side, we can substitute from the first law and integrate. The work done is zero at constant volume. So we just need to evaluate this term, DE, the change in internal energy, is NCV dt. Integrating that gives us 5 halves nr times the natural log of the temperature ratio. We know that ratio, so we can substitute the values and calculate to get an answer of negative 1.10. Let's erase and solve the set of questions dealing with the adiabatic path from 3 to 1. The first thing we're asked to find is the normalized work. We'll find this from the first law. For an adiabatic process, Q is 0. There's no energy added by heat. So the work that we're looking for is minus the change in internal energy. And that's minus NCV delta T. So substitute the final minus initial temperatures and normalize it. So that we get this factor of one minus T3 over T1. And again, T3 over T1 is our answer to part C. So substitute and calculate to find an answer of negative 0 0.890. Part M asks for Q normalized. The process is adiabatic, so Q is zero. The answer to part M is zero. Part N asks for the change in internal energy, normalized. We'll again start with the first law, with Q equals zero. The change in internal energy is negative, the work done by the gas. When we normalize this, we just get negative the answer to part L. So that's 0 0.890. In the last part, asks us for the normalized change in entropy, delta S. For an adiabatic process where Q is zero, we get no change in entropy.